I'm joined by human rights lawyer Julius Gray, who is part of a committee working on launching a legal challenge against Quebec's Bill 96, the overhaul of its French language law. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike Gray. A pleasure. What will that legal challenge look like? Well, we don't know. It's in, in the process of being done. It's certainly going to cover much uh, of the bill. Now, the question we don't know is whether it's going to be one challenge or two or three different ones. Uh, but that should become clear in weeks, uh, perhaps in a month. It'll be sooner rather than later. But uh, there's no pressure. We want to do it well. Why is something like this necessary? Well, I think the law is absolutely gratuitous. First of all, I doubt that French there's any danger to French. I think Bill 101, by obliging uh, immigrants to go to French school, has pretty well covered any uh, danger to French. And if you think about Montreal 20 or 30 years ago, French was much less uh, established, much uh, more threatened than now. Uh, so I, I think there is no threat. But even if you were to assume that there is some sort of threat, uh, then uh, uh, the measures undertaken have no connection to it. How does refusing somebody's service or access to courts or refusing to allow a francophone to use his knowledge of, of uh, English as, as a job thing where he can use his knowledge of algebra or his knowledge of grammar or his knowledge of history, it, it's nonsense. It has no connection. And uh, Mr. Uh, Jonin Barrette talks of the exemplarity of the law. You don't pass laws to make an example. You pass laws um, to improve the, something. It is safe to say that there is nobody in Quebec, francophone, immigrant, anglophone, uh, who is going to be better off because of this law, which means that in four years, voices will be raised saying, we didn't go far enough because we didn't get anything. Of course we didn't get anything because there was nothing in this law for anybody of, of, of any language or in any group. So it is a dangerous, I would call it a dangerous piece of demagoguery. What arguments will you propose in the legal challenge and in what instance might you bring this case to the United Nations? First of all, the arguments on the legal side are clear on the uh, uh, part affecting the courts because that's not affected by the notwithstanding clause. But there will be others. There is already a challenge in Bill 21 of the use of the notwithstanding clause. As far as bringing it to the international courts, first you have to exhaust internal remedies, so you have to go all the way to the Supreme Court. But afterwards, uh, you can go to the United Nations Human Rights Commission, and there's a precedent. We did that in the Bill 178 case, when Mr. Bourassa invoked the notwithstanding clause to uh, maintain unilingual uh, sign, commercial signs, and we won. And uh, Bourassa and Claude Ryan complied. Once they got an international judgment saying this is wrong, they, they, they went along with it. And so, obviously, even the notwithstanding clause is vulnerable before the international courts. But I think this law is uh, so dangerous and so, uh, uh, so useless that it is necessary to fight against abuses of power of this sort. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike Gray.